I'm Adam Sessler, and this is Creating Hell, the Art and Design of Doom Single Player. Um, I, the, the one thing I want to say is I'm very humbled to be at this table with these incredibly talented people. I cannot even light a candle to what you guys pulled off. Um, as someone who absolutely loved Doom, I want to congratulate all of you on the success of the game. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about all those facets, be it audio, be it art, be it the design, and how they all work together to create what I think was really... It's odd. I want to call it revolutionary, but you guys really made a game that's more traditional, and you reinvented it. Um, I think what we'll start off by doing is having you all introduce yourselves and what your role was on the game. Marty, do you want to take it off? Sure. I'm Marty Stratton. I was the executive producer and game director. I'm uh, Hugo Martin. I was the creative director. I'm Jerry Keehan. I was the mission design director. Uh, Shane Hara, animation director. Uh, Chris Hyde, audio director. All right, guys. Nice. Uh, so let's start. Doom, the, the first Doom came out in 1993. And while we have a lot of nostalgia for it, if you go back and you look at it, it definitely feels like 1993 in terms of design and what the technology was available. <laughs> so with that in mind, what was that core element that had to be Doom that you were going to put in something that obviously is so technically proficient and more sophisticated? Uh, I'll, I'll start, but we'll, we'll just make it very conversational. I'm kind of driving a computer here. We have a bunch of weird, crazy stuff that, that I'll, I'll jump to once in a while, um, if, it, if it makes sense. If not, you can look at the nice Doom logo the whole time. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, I, you know, we, we talked about it at the very uh, first time we showed it here at QuakeCon 2014. Um, the, j just some of the, the very uh, core components of, of the, you know, the speed, the way the guns played, the attitude and personality, um, uh, just the kind of over-the-top comic book level of the game and of the violence, um, the irreverence. Uh, th those were all things that, that as, we, as we started uh, kind of in, that, in those early days uh, in, in 2013, figuring out what you know what we wanted it to be, what we what we thought uh, fans wanted it to be. Uh, we just kind of kept gravitating towards those things, and and at, at that time, um, you know, you, you kind of you, you look at that stuff, and it's it's you know no reloading of your guns, no taking cover, and it it flies in the face a little bit of of what uh, a lot of a lot of shooters were doing at the time, and I think it worked really well for us because Doom, in and of itself, is kind of irreverent and and kind of bucks. You know, mentally it kind of bucks trends, and and it was it was almost empowering to to be able to do this with a brand like Doom. It just kind of the the synergy was there to say, you know what, we're going to do this, and 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 we're really gonna we're really gonna go for it. And guys, what, what what is Doom to you? What is that essential DNA that just had to be in this version of the game that goes all the way back to 1993? I think the tone, like Marty said, that was the thing we wanted to capture the most. Like regardless of whatever we did that it would still feel like a Doom game. So whenever we read that uh, in the reviews and stuff like that, it, it's a real uh, feeling of accomplishment because that, that was the main goal. It just feels like a Doom game. The tone, as you said, the irreverence, uh, that was important. I think uh, when, you, when we looked back, uh, the power of fantasy of the experience was a, was a core element. And uh, I think we, we would look back, we would look at the things that were important to us and uh, how, did we, how do we update them? How do we bring them forward? Uh, and I think for me, the core element uh, was was just the feeling that you get uh, when you would play those games, and how do we how do we update it? Yeah, for fast, yeah. fast and fast and fun. I mean, that was a those fun. Were, That's, fun. Yeah. Fun was always elevated yeah. to the top. We we wanted to make sure that it was fun and that we enjoyed it, and, and expected that people will enjoy it also. Yeah. Um, I, I love what you said about the power of fantasy because yeah. that, that intro of the game, you know, there's something very physical and brutal, and it really really sets the tone. Mm -hmm. um, did you guys plan that from the outset, or was there a lot of work that went into getting that, that opening sequence? A lot of work. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work. I kind of led that question, yeah. didn't I? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, we, we probably went through, I, I don't know, maybe five kind of complete versions sure. of the intro yeah, to, yeah. to where it was, it was kind of slow-paced, and, and then, you know, we had... Um, kind of scripts that would be much more traditional like you know a lot of information coming in and people talking to you and and right. you know like uh like cinematic even um uh you know at one point you you kind of walked this long path down the martian surface um it, it's actually almost kind of like when you once you get out of the elevator what what that what that feels like but um at, at one point you're walking through all this this 
kind of wreckage and, and there was no combat. Um, and and it's, it's, it's funny how, like now that we have what we have, you're just like, why did we not think of that first? Right, right, but, right. but man, it was a lot of, it was a lot of iteration, yeah. Brandon, who was kind of the designer on that level for, for a long time, he, uh, I think oh. he, I th he had three kids over the course of working yeah. on that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he started uh, that map, map over twice, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of patience. Yeah. yeah. We, ended up, we ended up doing it last for the most part because, you know, it's usually the, when we already know what we've got, right. you know, yeah. and, and we were able to actually do the, do the first level last. We, we made a significant cut of really far into it too like there was a lot of fat on it and uh, as Marty said at one point it was like a tutorial and uh, we just wanted it to be super tight and uh, usually like they say in in, uh, in film the audience you got about 15 minutes they're, they're very open-minded for the opening 15 minutes and that's where you need to establish like your tone and the type of story you're gonna tell and and uh, then they're bought in at that point so we figured like the the opening was super important to really establish the tone of the game that we we're gonna try to uh, you know make made for the player and and uh, we just had to edit it down so it was super tight and clean. And all these little things came in. Uh, Alan, one of the animators, he, he did the thing where, like, when you grab the guy's face and it goes, huck, huck, like, it bites you, tries to bite you before he smashes it on the ground. Like, the, just great moments like that. Or when he looks down at the corpse as, as uh, Samuel's talking to you. All that yeah. stuff was, like, in the execution. The, the artist working on it would add, like, these incredible little moments that, that really made it awesome. I'm sure most of you've seen this, but we pulled it up on YouTube. Like, just this. It, 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 it's it's interesting because we talk about like you know, uh, every, everything that we do is such a team effort. To take full responsibility um, so whether it's the, the writing here, uh, you know, or the voiceover work, or just the way the elevators, you know, kind of styled. Like, you know, there was a fight in here. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand. You know, Samuel talking about over out of hand, and you look down at the dead body. Um, who did the voice of Samuel? I, mean, I, I like to think there was a guy who actually sounds like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's awesome. By the way, it was not easy to get that shotgun cock to be timed right. I mean, Jerry could speak. Well, the, oh. Jerry and Chris, maybe forget it. It's just, it, it, it actually, I'm, 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 I'm going to go ahead and run with that. Uh, shotguns are so important to this game. Sure. Um, and the sound and the feel of it was so satisfying. Right. What is the process to get that perfect shotgun cock and, 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 yeah. and shot? So, so uh, guns are so hard to do uh, in any kind of first-person shooter. Um, but Doom is probably the hardest, right? Because uh, of how uh, important the power of fantasy is and uh, each gun has to feel amazing, and each gun has all of these different mods that you can do and upgrades and, and different behaviors, and so each aspect of that gun has to be uh, incredible feeling, and you have to have that feedback when you pull the trigger. Um, it just takes time. There's no... Now, are you recording no actual feedback. guns or using something else to, to get that sound? Absolutely. Uh, guns, synth synthesizers, uh, just crazy, like, you know, hitting giant metal walls with hammers, uh, recording <laughs> sessions. Uh, yeah. I mean, everything and anything that we can find, just kind of throwing it at that weapon. And with that in mind, the squishy sounds sure. when you do the glory kills. Is yeah. that <laughs> someone's lunch that you're yeah. just stepping all over? What is it? Yeah. Actually, uh, so this is a funny story. The Mangibus, um, part of his explosion uh, is uh, the guys took a steak, covered it in honey, pushed the steak through a vuvuzela, and then blew <laughs> the steak through the tube into a, a big thing of cold soup. <laughs> so that's the uh, that's how that happens. <laughs> I, I, that, that's both inspired and demented yeah. all at the same time. I, I, I don't it's, know it's how oddly you, specific, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's, did, did, did someone think this through, or are they like, hey, I got a steak and a move with Zayla and some yeah. soup over here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a hard search though when you're looking through your sound libraries right. to like you know heart being jammed down a big monster's throat right, and right, explosion. Right. So and I think Brad's got a burp in there too. Yeah, Brad. Yeah, there, there, yeah, there was yeah, definitely yeah. A, a some burps. There was some auditioning for burps. Yeah, right. at, the, at the studio. So let's let's go from that. Um, the glory kills. I think that really is a signature element of Doom. And it's you know I, I remember when I saw it for the first time two years ago, I realized that you guys were solving a problem that has sort of affected games like Doom and it's ill for so long, which is you have a lot of enemies in a big space and your instinct is to run backwards and get as much distance. Yeah. And the glory kills force you to actually go forward. Sure. Um, how long did it take for you guys to kind of 
develop that and realize that was going to be so important to this game? You know, it was it was actually one of the the very first things, and I'll let Sheen talk about this a little bit because because the animation team, uh, you know, it, it was actually I think it was at the end of 2012, like as we yeah, were like as right we were where we were actually starting that yeah uh, kind that, of uh, changing the theme of the game yeah mm -hmm. they had they had kind of put and I'll, I'll pull up the video while he talks about it um they had done this little animatic that i'll show we could <clears throat> we showed some slideshow version uh, kind of a stills of it in in 2014 we'll show you the whole video um uh, uh but it was it was actually one of those things that very early on uh, as we were talking about speed and movement and guns and and how you make that that doom feeling of of really pushing forward and and you know kind of weaving and all that kind of stuff through the combat, uh, they they did this animatic and it was just like oh that's that's pretty cool that fits let's let's do that and uh, I'll, I'll pull it up and let him him talk about it a little bit here. This is the uh, helicopter uh, elementary. Here I'll yes. I'll, I'll, I'll just yeah. plug. I mean, can we even envision what the game would have been like without the glory kills? No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, but, yeah, it's just it, it's it's so it's so it important. It's extremely to the game. vital to the. So this is this is very like these assets are. This is why we didn't show this before our game was done because it would have really confused people as to what we were making. But uh, so this is this is just our animation team, not gameplay. Uh, you know, doing things with uh, through through an animation program. Trust me, most of development looks exactly like that. Really, not very good graphics. It, but it, it, it highlights something really interesting, which is you know, it was lacking in a lot of the gore that's in the final game, and that you know those those glory kills, especially when you grab a demon and you just kind of tear its mouth open. Yeah, those are for previous, so it's like you know, it's just some cutting corners there. Uh, but there was like a two inspiration for this. Is one is obviously that melting demon stuff that mm -hmm. was very kind of like. Memorable to me from you know when you when I heard like doom it's that melting demon stuff mm -hmm. So that's kind of like one of our kind of a, a, a goal, you know how we can actually hit that and while we're actually making that particular previous a uh, That wasn't really clear to us like how we can actually technically achieve that in 3d, you know yet uh, But also like we to actually have some kind of a, a, a game mechanics that can show you know the the gory bits. The another thing is actually was a prom, which is a uh, uh, in Rage. Uh, we had this uh, Rage was pretty uh, uh, good as far as like if you're fighting against like a uh, shooting uh, mm -hmm. enemies. But as soon as you fight this skinny mutant, which is a melee unit, which is a plush unit, uh, it, the player's behavior start to kind of be like more like a moving backwards. You know, so it was move back combat. You know, so that actually kind of scared the hell out of us because I was actually part of making the. Um, the AI for that game, and I knew that was the issue. But when I actually uh, moved on to a uh, Doom project, a um, lot of enemies that was listed was melee on it. So like that point, like we were like, wow, we're we making like a pushback combat game, <laughs> you know. So we need to turn around to like a push forward combat. So uh, so uh, the first thing uh, we we kind of broke it down. Why it's like a push backward is because in, in Rage, uh, the only way to actually stop the enemy in that particular game is actually shoot them and kill them. Unless enemy is dead, you can't stop them. You know. Uh, so that's where like we start to actually uh, invent this particular feature called stagger, which we actually gave a weapon a ability to actually stop the enemy. You know. But that kind of made it like a stay that spot combat. You know, right. Because you're just like staying there shooting an enemy stops and kill them. Uh, and then like, you know, eventually like we kind of uh, uh, brought in this like a sync melee system which uh, uh, it promotes a player to move forward and then uh, uh, give you a, a guaranteed kill, you know. So that way like first initially you shoot them because it's a shooting game, right. not the melee game. Uh, and then you actually put them into stagger uh, state and then it promotes player to move forward. 
And then uh, one of our senior designer, Jason O'Connell, said, well, why don't you just let the, uh, the health pack come out of that? You know, right. and that kind of guaranteed it. Like you want, and then you had the forward. perfect sort of f feedback yeah. loop where yeah. the, there's a reward for, for for doing it, even though there's a reward just in looking at what you're doing. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned the gore. Actually, this is. I'll just show this I, video real quick. Like this is so this is this is what this looks like. And we always talk about violence being part of the DNA or gore being part of the DNA of doom. Um, you know, these are these are those. By the way, when we first saw that animatic, people didn't think these wall pillars would ever work. So you kind of get the sense there. And, and now, here, here's, here's the difference with the little effects of blood and over the top. You just, you really get the sense of the, uh, of the impact. It's a, it's a player feedback, you know. Yeah, it's a combination of your visual effects and uh, movement, and just kind of connecting those two, and then just kind of provides the, the effects that player expect that will happen. Uh, that clear connection actually really kind of promotes that the the kind of connection because in first person shooter it's really tricky to make you feel like you exist there you know so you do have to do tricks like this like a lot of those to kind of like uh, trying to like uh, make you feel like you're there and you're doing this particular uh, 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 movement you know uh, attacks in there. So did you all like sit in the boardroom and just come up with really really. <coughs> Twisted ideas of how you can kill it. I mean, I'm, I'm curious what the creative process was of coming up well, with glory kills. Uh, it's weird because uh, when uh, I went to actually Art Institute of Dallas here, you know, and uh, it was like the last place I thought I would actually be able to work because I, I I'm so like wimpy in a way I can't really watch like horror movies and gory movies. So like when I watch like oh no don't do that you know turn it off. Uh, uh, yeah, but then uh, I joined uh, uh, Aid when you know we were making Rage and which is not really a bloody crazy game you know so it was kind of easy in. Uh, but I was kind of surprised to see myself morph into somebody that is this you know talking about okay so in this section maybe you can rip the arm off and then. <laughs> Maybe you should block the chainsaw, but then cut through the arm. Right. Yeah. 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 So you, you hear all these like animators coming up with this crazy like brutal conversation. They kind of get immune to it. Uh, but we did uh, we did want to make the gore feel not like so like uh, gross. We wanted to make it feel more like anime, you know, like it's more like a stylized in a way. So if you actually take a look at those gore stuff, it's uh, you have like a, a chunk of meat, but it's just bloody mess. So you don't really see like a guts and spines and I mean um, uh, ribs and stuff like so much, but you just have kind of like a, almost like illustration feel to it, you know, so kind of a chunk of meat and then just spine and they're kind of moving around like this. Uh, no, but I, it's another. I, I think it's a very interesting point because. You could have done the same thing with the glory kills and done it just slightly different and it probably would have come across as gratuitous and unpleasant. Oh, yeah. That there really is kind of an elegance yeah. to how you guys portrayed them that makes it kind of fun and satisfying. Yeah, we it had to be uh, over the top, sorry, over the top like comic book because uh, if it wasn't, we wanted, this just sounds sick, but uh, we were very much focused on the reaction that we wanted the audience to have when they looked, just played the game. We didn't want people to cringe like, you know, like a horror game, suspense game. We wanted them to smile because we felt like that's that, that that's how you were when you played the original Doom. So like, I think if it's like buckets of blood and it's just so over the top, very much like Kill Bill or Evil Dead, that like that tone is kind of makes you smile, you know, and uh, and that 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 kind of opens it up. Uh, so we could do even more crazy stuff. And, and Doom just is even as a brand. I mean, right. you're, you're killing demons. Like, the book is open. You can do just about anything, and people are not going to feel bad about killing demons. Although we did have some focus testers at one point actually ask, like, they, they played the first level, and this is before, like, I mean, this is again when we're kind of iterating through that first level, and you get the feedback, like, I want to know why I'm killing demons. And you're like, <laughs> You don't get to focus test it. What's my motivation? I've never really tried to deconstruct it in my head. It's like, yes. there's a demon, I must kill it. Right. It's just kind of that simple. And, and you're playing a game called Doom, which yeah. is pretty much the, the, the premise. But with, 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 with that in mind, I mean, there, there is story in this Doom game. Probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the most story that's ever been in a Doom game. Sure. Yeah. Um, but if you actually did more than there was, I think it would not have felt like Doom. Like, trying to also find that balance there to give enough kind of reason for why you're killing all the demons, but not to sort of overload the player with some kind of twisty story. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, th the, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, that's a good, good example. Um, uh, and and it, was, it was something that um, uh, it, it, it came out, I mean, I, huge, huge props to, to Hugo. He drove uh, just a, a whole ton of this stuff. Um, but uh, it, it was it, so easy. It was not <laughs> easy. <laughs> It was absolutely the hardest aspect of it. It was, I, yeah. We, we get asked all the time, like, what yeah. was the hardest aspect? And, and like, trying to, to get there with, with the story, um, because it was, I mean, it's just flat out doom is not about the story. But if, if we, we, we love the brand and we think there's so much there that, that is, like, the UAC, it's never really been, like, what, like before before this game, like what is the UAC? And you'd be like, oh, it's a sci-fi kind of evil corporation, um, and that that's about as deep as it goes. There's a little bit more, you know. I mean, Doom Three Doom Three did some storytelling too, um, but it's like going the the really kind of twisted route with that. And if but 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 all along, whether it's the the origin of the the Doom Marine or the way the UAC operates or anything like that. The whole trick was like to keep it out of the way of of players who just right. want to kill demons. Because that's yeah, what they the, come the, to. at its core, the, it was the Doom Marine. It was always the Doom Marine. That was what drove us in the story and in the game itself. Yeah. So with the gameplay, I, I want to call out the moment where I where I started to really feel like the narrative was working for us um, because it was such a struggle for so long. It's about uh, four months before we shipped yeah. the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like uh, one day you we... ship, you read the good reviews. You're like, this the narrative is working. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in in surface, uh, the filter moment yeah. when yeah. when uh, the Doom Marine basically is listening to Samuel and then just does not care at all and just starts smashing away. That was the moment where we're like, okay, this is this is, you know, he's physically doing this. He's telling, he's saying more than he could ever say if, if there was actually dialogue. Yeah, um, it's fast, it's funny, and then I think that kind of basically spread out from from that yeah. level. Well, that that moment also hard. like. We feel like okay, we can do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, yeah we talked it about it. Yeah. We had talked about it early on. You know, that was a years ago. Like, okay, yeah. what what was this going to be? And that that when we finally got it in in that form, that fashion, then it started to spread out and made its way all the way yeah. to intro. Right. We we you know? we had like a saying like let the game tell you what it wants, and so we would we would try stuff like we had like you know the voice in your ear helping you along the way like traditional stuff and. As soon as you played it, it was just like, yeah. oh my god, this is terrible. You know, uh, like the Doom Marine doesn't take orders. You know, right. that was like a that was like a big thing. And if you have, if you and have, he doesn't fix stuff. I mean, like, like literally, right. even that filter thing was like, it's it's because you because you're ultimately you're always building the game. I mean, from a design perspective, it was it was about combat. I mean, that that was front and center the whole time. So you're just going through and, and the story ends up trying and, and some of those things ends up getting you from place to place and, and making that feel justified. So an often thing, you know, like you guys play a lot of games, you fix stuff. You like go and repair the generator or you go and, you know, do, do you fix things. And, and it's like, man, it, yeah. and, and it was it was that moment like, no, he doesn't fix things. He tears shit up. So right. um, that, that, that really he's like a big adolescent, really. Yeah. You think, it's just like, no, you're not my dad. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think uh, we actually um, on, on the idea of story and not so much the narrative of the game. I think one of the things that really stood out to me, I, I was shocked, was you get to go to hell so early on that that's always been kind of the ace up the sleeve for Doom, and you guys decided to play it early. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm curious what the thought process was behind that, because I think it carries a lot of risk, even though it really, really works in this case. Well, we had some, we had some really good ideas for Hell, and we wanted to get the player there as quickly as possible. I mean, that, at its core, I mean, we could, it could get detailed with that, but essentially we wanted to get you there, yeah. because we were going to take you there, bring you back, and take you again. So that was always the to, to get to there as quick as possible. So get as much of the game out of the way and get you ready to go to hell. Yeah, especially since that's where you're from. That's where they found you. So you, we thought it would be good. Plus, Jason O'Connell is one of our principal designers. He made this awesome hell level. And uh, it's a big inspiration for actually a lot of the, doom, right. the, the doominess that's in the game. And um, we, we just wanted to get there as soon as possible. And it, it's fun first. Like, I think there, there were times where, like, our outlines didn't get us there fast enough. And... That's when you just keep simplifying the story because you just you just want to have player wants to go to hell just get him there, keep keep it light you know. I just want to go to hell, Dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so let's let's also talk about the the design the the art of hell versus the art of Mars. I mean, there's, I mean, it, it's almost like carte blanche. 
And, but, but there is a cohesiveness and a logic that seems to be, let's, let's, let's talk about hell first. Just what was the, the thought process and the philosophy of how hell was supposed to look? Well, uh, you know, the animators, we, we have an awesome animation team. And um, when you look at the stuff that they did, like, like how much personality it has, and it, it's, it's, it's very Evil Dead too. it's very humorous, you know. Uh, and it, but it's super over the top. I think that, you know, we wanted all, all aspects of the game to kind of work together and, and, and not feel like any one, one aspect, whether it's art, design, or tech, feels like separated. So I think that's why the UAC is so over the top, because it kind of complements the ridiculousness of the violence and gore that was going on. And then the visual style of the world, we, we never take ourselves too seriously. That was like our huge mantra, was like, just don't take yourself too seriously. So like the, when I, when we thought of Doom, it was like heavy metal album covers right. from the 80s right. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And, you know, we're, we're all fans. So yeah, so we, we, the concept guys are amazing. That's, that's uh, Alex Palma. I mean, they just came up with some amazing ideas, plus like, I mean, again, Jason O'Connell, Jerry, the level designers, like everybody's throwing in really, really good ideas. Because once you say like, you start talking about heavy heavy metal album covers, everybody gets really good pictures That's in their right. mind of, of what it could be. Um, I have something. I'm so say. it's just very Keep much talking. over the top to complement the stuff that was happening in the game. Um, it, to the point of the level design, I mean, obviously one of the key mantras of this game is always be in motion. Um, I don't think it's apparent because it's so fun to play, but how thoughtful you have to be in designing a level that accommodates endless motion and movement and combat happening there. I mean, how iterative was the level design in the process of making Doom? Very iterative. I mean, we, we um, you know, we, wa we wanted to make sure that the player wasn't going to have just a, a linear experience, but that when you get to, you know, ultimately everything is linear when you have an objective. But to make it feel as, yep. as open as possible, you know, we spent a lot of time iterating on the arenas where the combat takes place. That's the, you know, that was a big part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting that, get, getting the arenas right, getting the spaces right where I'm going to spend most of my time fighting demons. Yeah, I was Skate actually parks. very like impressed by uh, uh, Jerry and his team's level design because uh, when we decide to go with that speed, mm -hmm. and also we decide to introduce uh, ledge grab, uh, when that particular conversation came out, and uh, um, it, it's obviously adds a lot to the game. You know, it's it's yeah. good, but uh, and then actually execution of actually making the ledge grab part work is not nearly as complex as actually making level design to work. Because, uh, you know, I, I worked on a couple of, you know, uh, uh, first person shooter, but it was always flat, you know. Mm -hmm. So making that interdimensional, I was like, that's, that's, I've never seen that before, you know, like at yeah. least in my career. And then uh, uh, I, I thought these guys executed to like a craziest level. Like it's, it really works really well. No, it, it, so it, it's really it, like it you can't, uh, like, the, obviously the ledge grab is, in your, in your face and like, oh, it's cool. But the thing is really, actually, I think, I believe the level design really made it. Yeah. We uh, had a you know, uh, shine. We, we call the arena spaces uh, like skate parks because that's kind of how you felt after a while. And, and um, there was a designer, Greg Barr, he made this uh, movement map. I think we have footage yeah, of it. Yeah, I, I actually just want to show, that, that was an actual referencing that you had pulled yeah. together. <laughs> that when we were doing the Revenant, and and you know we, we say we were inspired by rock and roll and heavy metal. I mean, it literally went from that to that, you know, to that. Yeah. I mean, it was it was. That's how that, that was a big. Once we had huge, that huge part. I mean, uh, Eric, Eric Carell, our, our brand manager, he, when he saw that, it, we all felt like, wow, yeah, that's, that's that's totally that's going to work. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Greg made this this uh, movement map. And uh, it, it was pretty. It was it was a it was a good moment in the in the development. Of the yeah, game real game. real good. I mean, it's it's just like when you when you think about when we talk about the arenas or the spaces that you're going to play in, it's you know you, it's almost inspired by multiplayer. Yeah. Really, I mean, the way you have yeah. to move and the way you have to you know you think, okay, if we're going to create these characters, these monsters that are going to come at you, like someone else would, mm -hmm. you know, with their own. With this, their own abilities. This is also the first map where I'd be testing a weapon and then, oh, but I want to kill some more dudes. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. 30 minutes later, maybe, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't look like maps. Like you said, you know, like, what the heck with these graphics? But, like, we have all played this yeah. map yeah. Yeah. just like this probably 80 to 100 hours. Yeah. I mean, because it was, we basically, our, de our design team had, had uh, our systems designers created, like, a little box map right next to it that when something new would go in the game, it, it was basically like the zoo of weapons and abilities and all that kind of stuff where you could go in and you could be, you know, kind of a blank slate and go in and upgrade yourself, kind of picking up all the stuff. And then you would go into this map and enemies continued to respawn infinitely. Um, and, and like, when, when this was first made, this was way back in 2013, um, 
the the designers kind of did a little test where uh, you you went into here and you didn't have uh, double jump and you didn't have ledge grab uh, just to kind of prove out those mechanics and you'd go through and play and you're like oh this is fun and we had our glory kill stuff and it was it was feeling good and then they're like okay now go back pick up double jump and ledge grab and now play it again and you just felt like this this kind of like I'm liberated and I can go anywhere and it feels and again it's like tell, let the game tell us what it wants it was like as the Doom Marine, it was always, it, it never felt good that like, you know, I'm standing down here in this, and I can't jump up on this stage. That doesn't make me feel powerful. Um, so actually being able to go almost anywhere you wanted to and be able to yeah. jump and ledge grab right. and all that kind of stuff, as much as it was great from a game mechanics perspective, it really even continued to enhance like the power fantasy power that Chris fantasy. talks about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think you can understate or overstate just how impressive the ledge grab is. I mean, if, if anyone out here remembers playing the original Half-Life in that last section in Zen when it becomes the platformer, sure. platforming in first-person games doesn't usually work. Um, and somehow... I mean, we know that. We know it's, that. It's, somehow it, 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 it works in Doom. I mean, you really, in a funny way, have made like a really violent platformer. I mean, just how... Uh, without giving away the secret sauce, I mean... That's very ambitious. I think you were kind of crazy for doing it, but, but it works. I mean, what, what was that iterative process just to figure out what felt right and that the player knew that if he jumped there, he was going to actually land? I, I don't know. I don't even know if there is secret sauce oh, yeah. other than just like we Hard just work, started yeah. playing and we doing that. We played it a lot. One day, I mean, Peter said, hey, you want to test ledge grab? And then it was in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it, it is funny, though, because like even this, like this is, this is pretty vertical, this, this thing you're, working on, you're looking at here. But it's, it's not nearly as vertical, because this was very early on. It, 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 it kind of started here. And then, and then you would do things while you were playing in this map. And again, we played this map a lot. You'd, you'd kind of pull off moves, uh, like, like, like death from above for, to, is, is, <laughs> is something, you know, where you kind of jump, and you double jump, and you get even higher. And you're like, that's really fun. And, uh, and you, you just, you, you'd kind of get these, these moments uh, where, where it, it just, again, the game's like screaming for more verticality yeah. and for more uh, opportunities to, to, to move through the space. It felt heroic, too. I think that was, like, it, the, the mechanic work, the animation was beautiful, but, like, uh, we, we, we started to really push that the Doom Marine was like an action hero. And so it was more about, like, you know, John McClane coming in through the vents, climbing the side of buildings. So, like, especially in like a map like Argent Tower, where we take it kind of to the limit, that that you would use double jump and ledge grab to put yourself in a place that you know normal people wouldn't go. Yeah. So, and, and that actually, that that made, that was part of, as Chris said, the power fantasy. I think is is you're you're just able to go anywhere. Well, and, and the other part that's so interesting is, you know, the game is so fast. You're always in this position of movement, right. which means that you're having to telegraph information to the player. You know, I you know I'm, if I'm moving that fast, I only have a split second to realize I can jump up there or I can move there. I mean, that part really impressed me. That you know, I just knew that that there's a, a logic to the game. If I hit jump, I'm gonna land somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and honestly, we, we it was it was tricky because. A lot of games that use some form of mantling or, or, or ledge grabbing, they'll they'll do something in the world that like is is kind of like the indicative mark, whether it's like paint strike down the, right. you know, down the down the thing, and it 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 was something that we we actually we struggled with mm -hmm. honestly because yeah. it's it's like we want the player. Uh, you know, we want the player to, to. We want it to be that intuitive. We, right. we just don't. We don't. You, you shouldn't have to think like because because the combat is so fast. You shouldn't have to think where where can I go. Um, so it was it was really uh, uh, kind of putting the challenge to the level designers of like, if it looks like they can go there, they should be able to go there. Right. Like we shouldn't have some other like it needs an orange stripe on the edge of it to know that you can you can grab it. It's right. like if if it looks like you can go there. You, you should go there. So, so really, it, 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 it's a lot of iteration through that stuff. Um, and then, I th but I think what it turns out is you you end up f having that feeling. Like, uh, um, there's a couple jumps in in like Argent Tower and, and and some of the Hell maps where you're like, that's a really long way. I don't know if I can make that. Uh, uh, and they and they kind of push the limits of that. But uh, but it, it it turned out to to kind of just round out that feeling of I don't have to think if I just if I if, if it looks like I can do it I can do it it was I mean it was led a lot by the fact that we didn't you know, we want the player to know where to go but we don't want to hold your hand doing it yeah mm -hmm. you know it was really intuitively designed though like because uh, in when I'm playing uh, uh, Doom like a lot of the places where you feel like you can't go you can't and the place you can you feel like you should be able to go you can uh, and I think 
I think most of games out there, like uh, uh, even one of those very high-end games, like sometimes, like why can't this person do that? Like, right. You know, it's very strange. Yeah, you start to feel those artificial uh, limitations. Yeah, and it's very yeah. designy. Yeah. yeah. But as for like the uh, how uh, uh, these guys actually designed the level, like which was also one of the very impressive thing to me, is that uh, uh, it is freaking intuitive, and yep. then uh, it's very clear like what the Doomer can do and can't. You know, despite the fact that he's a very capable player. Um, there is certain things that, you, yeah, you'll probably die if you do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or, um, so it's, yeah. It, it's really it's that, that, that combination, uh, you know, we always talk about trying to, to just, from a, from a, the way the team works together, just be as, as in sync as possible and have everybody really with the same, same goal, because that's, that's the only way it, it, it actually, it actually works. And, and something like that is, is, a, is an example of systems design, kind of coming up with double jump and, and, and testing it out. Um, but then, you know, level design and art, working through, like, we introduced double jump at, uh, at the Argent Tower map. So you, you get the jump boots and then you, you kind of traverse this massive bridge structure um, and then go up this massive tower and like within you know the first 25 minutes of, of getting getting the, the, the jump boots um, you really you're, you're sold it's like Hugo talks about about the intro you kind of set the expectation with the audience it was really important in that level for the designers and the artists and and even the combat uh, uh, to 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 kind of hone in on and, and the animation to hone in on that idea that like you now have this capability and s sell the audience on sell the player on exactly what they can do with it and and I think that that level was very key to to introducing you to that idea and and, and, and really hitting it home so you, you felt confident with that mechanic than the, the rest of the game that and green lights green lights <laughs> green is good green is good green is go tell you where to go. Um, let's talk about demons because I just you know the, the the design of the enemies in the game is just so much fun and there's you know there, there's so much clear care and detail. Um, obviously, you're working off of a game from 1993 that really wasn't even polygonal and it kind of more implied demons than actually showed <laughs> demons. Uh, I, 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 I'd love to hear sort of you know when you look at the original enemies in the original Doom. How much space you had to sort of create and get imaginative, you know, by making them into something that's you know very very pretty in in the new game. Well, we had a lot of room. I think, uh, like Sheen said, that he was looking at the uh, the sprites of them melting, and we were looking at the sprites for their design. Uh, it, it's actually really good design because if you can tell what something is when it's like a thumbnail size or a, a sort of size of a postage stamp, that means that you have like a good piece of design. So we wanted to take the elements of uh, those original characters and then kind of bring them in, in, into 2016 with all the detail and, and high-res textures and things like that. Um, I, the, the, everyone involved did like an amazing job. You know, the, the character uh, modelers, Jason Martins, their lead character artist, I mean, and, and everyone on the team was just it was remarkable. The, the amount of detail, if you've played the, the, um, um, the VR uh, Doom experience that, that we have here, it's it's amazing. Like you get to see the detail of the models uh, up close. And then, um, it, honestly, again, to, to his point, then you got the sound and then you have the animation. Like they, they're really pretty models, but they're, they're just models that you gotta have all that stuff uh, coming in to make sure it really captures the spirit of those original uh, those original characters, which I think everybody involved uh, did an awesome job. There was so much personality in the early demons uh, from one and two. Um, that yeah. was a, a huge challenge to kind of bring forward, but I really feel like uh, with with all those departments working together, we kind of we, we hit the, the mark. Especially with the sound. I mean, the sound. Yeah. You, you know, iconic sounds of the, sure. when they entered space, and you knew, and even if it was dark, you couldn't hear it. Yeah. Uh, that was important to bring that a forward. Huge touchstone from from yeah. earlier Hitting games. Hitting the stick. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, was, were, were there any rules you guys are trying to hold to? I mean, I, I think like when when the Mancubus first shows up. You know, and it's it's flesh is undulating. I mean, it's, there, there, there's there's a lot of fun in all of that. But I, 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 but, I, but, I, but I'm curious, sort of like if you said, okay, we can do this, but we shouldn't do this. Like, what was the rule set? Uh, so, like Hellraiser is a very specific style of character design. It's, and again, it's more in the like sort of the edgy, a little bit. I don't want to say mean spirited, but it's just kind of a different different type of horror. And then there's. Uh, you know, Doom, which is much more comic book. Again, I've said this before, but it's like it. The 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 guideline was the original Doom characters looked like something a 15 year old would draw in the back of his notebook yeah. during math class. Right. So then, as so long as we kind of stayed within that, and there's you use the word juvenile. I mean, that that's a good example. Um, then 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 we were good. 
And, yeah. and everyone had to have, uh, and again, this, this is very much brought out uh, both in animation and sound, uh, it is the, uh, a lot of personality. Yeah. Like, like they had to have personality. I mean, when in the QuakeCon demo, when the Mancubus comes out from the double doors and the light shining behind him, we, he looks like Elvis. That, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not the young, like when Elvis, <laughs> Kung Fu Elvis from the 70s. And, and uh, so, but, and, and the, the Revenant, I mean, in speaking with the animators, I mean, it, you know, they, he, he's just like this uh, mental patient escaped, you know, he, he's crazy looking and, and very, very rock and roll, very much like the, the, the reference that we were using and then the sounds all, all uh, really com complemented that stuff. Yeah, so. like every, 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 every enemy you see in this particular game is, I would say, uh, pretty sophisticated and they're all custom. So uh, usually a lot of games out there, like you do share animations between multiple characters and stuff. <laughs> Uh, as for them, is uh, pretty much they're all custom for that particular thing. So we really wanted to actually, uh, first of all, like uh, capitalize on those uh, 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 beautiful character design that the, the guys on the original Doom artists come up with, and they really wanted to actually make it come to life. Uh, one of the way to do that is actually really put in uh, as much care as you would put in for like you know a main enemy, for instance. So. Uh, but it was actually challenging because most of the games out there, you're basically fighting one enemy. Usually it's human, you know. Our game is actually different. It's all creatures and, and then on top of that, you have to do these glory kill things, you know, uh, the special gores and stuff like that. Uh, so it was a, a, a monumental task. Uh, but I think uh, 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 that's also like a kind of contributing to like, you know, uh, adding the, the richness of the kind of the, in the combat. Yeah, a huge part. Of, a huge part of the uh, is the the movement through the world. Mm -hmm. You know how they move through using the animations and stuff. How they can, especially like the imp has probably the most robust yeah. uh, set of animations to be able to traverse the spaces, yeah. which brings it alive, makes it feel like. Uh, actually, he's really that's there. a good point too, because it also again comes down to a level design again, because uh, the this traversal system is one of those that you know enemy can be here, and if there's a cliff, it can climb up. You know. But all that stuff has to be planned, and also all that stuff has to be set up by designers, you know. So actual, like, the, the AI behavior for uh, uh, many parts is actually uh, kind of like the collaboration between actual AI design itself, but also at the level design, and how they actually, you know, uh, interact with that. This is, this is a funny video, actually. So, so, you know, when you talk about, like, each of, it's, it, it, is, it is really hard, like, the, the, no joke, like, every enemy is totally individual, and that goes across everything from, the, the design of it, to the rigging, to the skinning, to the animation, to the, uh, you know, yeah. the way the designers have to approach it. Like, it is not like just fighting a, b a bunch of humans that use different types of guns and stuff like that, the behaviors. So this, this is actually, uh, this is way back in the earliest, earliest, earliest pinky development and gives you a little glimpse of, of how you have to approach, like, is this going to be fun? <laughs> yeah. Ship it. It, it, I, I, I didn't mention that too. Like seeing this, it, it, it starts with the the AI guys. We have great AI guys on yeah. the team. Uh, Kurt, Jake, all the guys involved, and um, they, they establish what we call them chess pieces, and, and then the arena spaces are like the chessboard. You know, it's like oh. the, you got killed by a couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of kind of like the combat puzzle that you're trying to solve when you play Doom, and that starts with the AI guys. So you know, gameplay first, and and uh, there's just as much personality in that little thing running right there. He's going to have a weak butt and kind of charge you like Pac-Man and stuff like that. So we have to make sure that not only he looks cool. But he, uh, he he serves the, the, the purpose of, of what it is they're trying to do there from a design standpoint. So uh, they, those guys did a great job. Yeah, the oh. AI stuff, the, um, uh, the, I noticed that the, so to do like, let's say this push forward stuff, uh, a lot of it's also integrated with the AI design as well. So uh, our uh, a senior AI designer, uh, uh, Jake Campbell, he, he actually uh, did a lot of interesting uh, uh, kind of mechanics in the way that I think he talks it uh, as a token system, I think that yeah. the um, uh, basically so for instance, like you might actually realize this or not, but the when an uh, uh, archfile is in the scene, that's actually the only enemy is actually shooting a heavy attack, and the rest of it is actually suppressed so somewhat. You know, these are actually uh, Prior uh, it's a priority, yeah, priority, priority balancing in a way so that the uh, the player don't really get overwhelmed and start becoming like a push backward combat. You know, uh, and same thing applies to like a hell knight. Like you know, it's uh, only few are actually allowed to do. A actual invasive attack, and the rest of it actually taunted back there, you know, unless you shoot them, 
then they get pissed off and start, <laughs> you know, beat the hell out of you. But all these actually, uh, 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 the design that, that I thought was really uh, strong to actually make this whole kind of feel of how the Doom combat works uh, in our game. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the talk about AI, I mean, it really is interesting because, as you mentioned, most games you're fighting a human enemy. And I think we apply a certain level of sophistication to replicating sort of human thoughts and, and reflexes. You have demons, not the most thoughtful demons. You know, they're kind of like single-minded and like, I want to kill you. Um, I, I imagine that that creates certain challenges because you need to make them dynamic. You need to make them, to some extent, intelligent, but they still need to be kind of crude in their intentions, which is just, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, kill the Marine. What, what was that process like to have AI that was indicative of the, the look of the demon and then have a behavior that was distinct from all the other demons? I, I mean, I think that, that again, that goes to, to, to the great work of, of Kurt and, and the animators, but uh, it, it, it's, to, to a great extent, I think everybody was inspired by first the look of it and and some of the original behavior but um, you know like the uh, uh, you know whether it's the revenant with his jetpack and that, that's kind of a new ability for the for the revenant to take off but it, it fit in in a gameplay structure we didn't really have uh, kind of a, an, an enemy that could traverse in that way very very quickly um, and and just you know you, you just you just kind of take a look at them and and look at their original behaviors uh, you know the 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 uh, the pinky is a, is a good example you know he he kind of looks like a bull, so I think that that nature of, of charging and and you know putting his head down and being a little little clumsy, a little stupid, running into the wall, it just it's just kind of this thing this thing that evolves. Plus, that's that's kind of what the game wanted at that point too. Yeah, like it, it needed. We had the imp, we had the hell knight, and in the case of the pinky, like it just felt right to have to have him kind of be uh, play that way he would complement the, the sort of the, the combat in a good way yeah that and the nostalgia of it i mean there was a nostalgia sure. element that went yeah. into all of it is that we got to have a pinky right like what is it going to be and what is it going to look like now it was it was one of the things uh, people <clears throat> people always ask about the balance of kind of like how you how you bring the old school and and make it good for for kind of new players that maybe haven't played Doom, and and all along it's just it's it's trying to say like this has to first and foremost it has to be fun and it has to be appealing and cool for somebody that has never played the game. You have to be able to look at something like you know like like the Revenant and like that guy's just cool. Like it doesn't matter if you know Doom or not, but. Uh, but then, if you if you if you know the game, if you're familiar, if it's part of what you've you know kind of grown up with or whatever, um, you look at it and you're like, ah, I, I get it, I see it. I you, you feel Hugo always uh, always would say like you know make the audience feel clever, uh, and and the fact that you look at him and and he's totally new, he's totally different. There isn't really anything about him that is just completely ripped off from the old. I mean, really, the biggest thing is the kind of skull head, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and the, the, the essence of it and the, the, the design of it. But, um, but you know, he's just cool. But uh, somebody who's played Doom their whole life is like, oh, yes, I, I, I totally get it. And, and that really goes across everything. I mean, another image here of the, of the way uh, the, um, the, the, the Doom Marine was, was developed. And, and you can see a lot of the, you know, the, the, the similarities in the helmet and, in, uh, and the, the six-pack abs. I mean, we wanted to... To get away from this exposed skin on the surface of Mars, as much as we don't care about reality, <laughs> right, right. but it was a good conception. It's been terraformed. It was very inspired throughout. You know, we, we everybody was very um, uh, just wanted to wanted to to make something new, but make sure that we infused the essence of Doom in, in just about every aspect of, of what we did. Um, the the later levels in the game. I mean, you're, we're talking about a lot of enemies and a lot of variations. You know, you're having almost every single demon in the game is suddenly present. I, I would love to know sort of how much you had to play with the balancing to know, like, okay, for 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 this wave of enemies, this is right. You know, then we can add in maybe two more mancubuses and have like five hell knights. I, I, would, I would love to get a sense of how much you had to experiment, to figure out what that perfect balance was. You, you can't have too many pinkies. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, because then there's, there's just too many of them, it becomes crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, I remember Jason O'Connell, uh, well, the Titan map, that that was the first time, uh, yeah. well, we don't, what is in the game, it's Argent uh, Dinner. Argent Dinner, yeah. but, but yeah. Uh, in development it's called Titan. And uh, uh, you guys, that was like the first time we got to play with all the chess pieces on the board, like right. all the guys, and that but, just felt awesome. Yeah. But but it is, it, it it's like, um, 
you know, it, it's it's a, it's a balancing act. Um, I, I give give Jason credit again too. The 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 enemies are kind of brought in, and Jerry can talk about this by by an encounter manager, and and you know, every designer is kind of trying to find their own you know their own feel of of the combat. And uh, and and there there was there were some levels that, that you would play through, and it would feel like you know it would feel like you're just getting completely overwhelmed at, at, at one time, and then it was nothing, and then you'd get completely overwhelmed. And Jason had done some smart things where he had you know he was basically setting up encounters to kind of like he would he would have a mancubus in the scene, and and uh, you'd be fighting it, and when it when it was like you know twenty percent uh, towards the end of its life, then he would spawn the next one, so so that you really got a sense of of being overwhelmed and having like oh my god there's two mancubus but Relentless. one of them is about ready to die yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, right. it sounds obvious but but you know that playing with those kinds of variables um, and then and then uh, it was it was always a funny thing because um, uh, the the guy, the enemies that would throw projectiles or or the the um, the soldiers with the long range stuff um, uh, it was it was it seemed like a constant battle to not get them to to charge you um, just like a, a melee unit you wanted them to to stay back and uh, and because uh, you know when you use the skate park analogy it, it isn't fun when everything's just like smashed up right. against you and you're just you you're, you're just like this you got to be able to move so always finding that balance of, of how much an enemy would pressure you uh, but but still give you the opportunity to to kind of dodge and weave and move and, and, and that kind of stuff was, I mean, it was it was countless hours of, of testing, really. Yeah, like a lot of the, what goes into it, I mean, when, when we get an encounter set up and, you, you know, you have your initial encounter and you get a good, most most designers will sit down and they'll play for hours and now days uh, until they get what they feel is right and then we sit down with, the, you know, the director group, we sit down and go, okay, how does it feel, how does it look, and then in, in, in a little broader audience. And then adjust and tune from there because yeah we have an encounter manager that lets us kind of do anything we want to do but then getting that honed down to that special like okay yeah this is good and there's it's never perfect but you get it as close as you can yeah. to to yeah. really make it feel it's, good it's, and feel it's, tight it's pretty damn close to perfect in my estimation <laughs> so um, with, with that in mind I think we have time for maybe a couple of questions is there anyone out there this gentleman there you had the quick hand okay. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, since we're talking about art, I wanted to shine some light on the cinematic trailer, the debut trailer, um, which I thought was wonderful. Um, the way you basically made a little, this is the first half of Doom, in two, three minutes time. Um, how balanced it was with the choreography of the music, with scene by scene, uh, showing a little bit of Hey, we have a hallway. Hey, we have a demonic church. Bringing about the old with the new. Um, I was wondering if you had any interesting tidbits on that process and how it came to be. Well, we I, you, 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 you got a twenty four? <laughs> no. So so Eric Eric's <laughs> Eric, Eric's our, our uh, uh, global brand manager for, for Doom ran ran the marketing force and was was He's really a big part of that. Yeah, huge huge part of that. Um, uh, it was well, with storyboards, the usual process, you know, like brainstorming, um, coming up with the right tone and feel and making sure that it was representing the uh, the feel of the actual game itself well. But it, you also can't really show, like a, like some of the other ones that were made by a uh, company called GNET, where they actually used in-game footage, those those could be way more aggressive uh, for whatever reason. The commercial was uh, considered, uh, it's that's on like regular TV, right? So we can't have too much blood. So that was actually pretty challenging that it's pretty edgy, but you actually don't see any blood. So that, that was pretty cool. And then the selection of the song was a big, big process. And I, I told Eric like after, like once it was out, like I thought it was like ultimately like the best choice we could have made. Cause I just really like, I really like that song. It has a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, hopefully we get the suit in our office at some point. There's an, <laughs> there's an actual suit and, and uh, yes, I. Hopefully, we, we can have that soon. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you. I had some serious questions about the development earlier, but I forgot them. So, how, how much death metal did you listen to while making the game? A lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. Actually, in my car on YouTube, I mean, I don't speak for I, tons, seriously, like always. There's just one track that I would listen to from this like local band uh, quite quite a bit, and uh, just, just because, because we're making a Doom game. 
Yeah, high on fire was a big one. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. So, were the offices like really aggressive during this period of development? Like, you're just constantly listening to death metal. Like, dah, 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 dah. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. We, we would do sprint reviews, and people would like yeah. when, when we had a sprint review, they they cut together a video of the stuff they'd done. You know, a lot of lot of stuff like I've shown here, um, and it was always it almost yeah. always cut to some form of it, yeah. metal. Somebody said, like we didn't get a chance to talk about it so much, but music and sound in Doom is such a huge part of the experience. And uh, Chris, Chris and his team did like, I mean, we could talk about that for an hour. Uh, it's it's just, I mean, some of the some of the music in there is just unbelievable, phenomenal. Yeah, Mick Gordon. Yeah, yeah. soundtrack. Give some props. Yeah. Incredible. He's yeah, he's, he's yeah. amazing. You're yeah, so lucky. I noticed, uh, when you were demonstrating the earlier glory kills, uh, something you added later on was the camera really jerks forward when like punching or something that. Uh, that really puts some momentum to the, uh, the animation. Yeah. Sure does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, and it was even even that like the the timing of the glory kills and the the, the, the way in which they they it was it, like it it's just I mean that that's development and it's the fun part of development. I mean we we iterated on that a lot. I, I, mean, I would say uh, I mean you know, we have probably one of the best sync system uh, and the way it actually works is uh, it's actually location based. So based on what you're looking at. Uh, it goes into that particular location and then uh, play a specific animation and then get out around that area. And the reason why we did that is because I actually do get motion sickness playing a uh, first person shooter and that lot of sync animations uh, is very uh, kind of like uh, uh, aggressive. Mm -hmm. it, it, it makes you feel kind of nauseated, you know. So to fix that particular issue like what we actually uh, designed was uh, you roughly kind of make, so basically you have to make it seamless, right? So you basically acquire it like where the player is roughly looking at because you can find them now and then make animation basically leave around that area. So, so like if, if you're like by a wall or something, it, it smashes it. It is, yeah, it is contextual yeah. as well. So like if it is from the wall, uh, by the wall you can do that. Also you have actually direction also from front, back, left and right, all body locations and also from the top. So you can kind of see like in a way that times all these enemies. So it's just, uh, it's uh, that's why it's you don't really see, that's why you don't really see this kind of craziness in other games? <laughs> well, um, on that note, I would like to thank all of you for bringing the crazy, because, you know, once again, I, it was such a phenomenal game, um, and this has been an absolutely fascinating hour to just sort of hear and, and really get a better sense of what the development process was of Doom. So, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for your time, um, thank you guys for being here. Let's round of applause. Thank you. And thank you to Adam. Yeah, thank you, Adam.